Okay, so during the review process, uh, I noticed a lot of you were having some troubles with the Marshall Learner condition. So I wanted to make a short video to kind of go over, you know, the, the things and add some numbers to it so that the relationships are a bit clearer to see. Okay, so again, starting first of all, uh, the definition of the Marshall Learner condition states that, you know, a currency devaluation, meaning, you know, currency uh, becomes weaker will only lead to an improvement in the balance of payments if the sum of the demand elasticity for imports and exports is greater than one, which summarizes Marshall Learner condition. So we focus on these uh, few keywords. One is currency devaluation, then the balance of payments and elasticity for imports and exports. So these three concepts, uh, you have to have a firm grasp of before you know, you'll be able to understand this. And in terms of the paper, this is quite an important point for evaluating the effects of different currencies. Uh, so today, uh, for a simple example, we have, say, two countries, China and the US, and their respective currencies, the yen and the dollar, at a ratio of 6 to 1, which, you know, pretty much similar to what it is now. So we're going to assume that, you know, China exports uh, the t-shirts, here is product one, t-shirts, to the U.S. And we're going to assume that the U.S. exports computer chips to China. Okay. So as I said, I think this becomes a lot easier to understand with some numbers. So uh, we'll go through this. So let's assume here that China exports a quantity of 500 okay, t-shirts at an RMB price of... 24 yen per t-shirts, okay? So as the exporting country for US uh, importers buying these t-shirts, they go by the RMB price, okay? And then we calculate the US price, but the RMB price would be the main one. So in this case, we can see US dollars would be 25 divided by four is, or 25 divided by six is four, right? So quite easy. Then if we look at the total to see the effects on the current account balance, which is the part of the balance of payments that's most affected here, uh, we will get 12,000, right? So we can say RMB total will be 12,000, okay? So again, remember that on the current account, we're measuring the value of exports and imports, not the quantity. Okay, so we do quantity times the price, right? And if we're looking at it from the US side, we also get US dollars, 2000, right? Dollars. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the current account balance from China side, right? So let's go ahead and look in terms of the imports. Okay, so again, this is China exporting to the US. Then let's look at China importing from the US, okay? Importing these computer chips. So with the imports, let's assume China imports a quantity of 20 computer chips, okay? And now as US is the country selling, we start basically with the US price, right? US dollars, 100, let's say, per computer chip. And then we convert this to Chinese currency, the RMB, and we get we get 600 RMB. Okay. Uh, once again, the totals 12,000 right US uh, 2,000. Okay. Now at this stage, we've just kind of set up okay the initial conditions right. So then we will see what happens as China tries to devalue its currency or to cause depreciation of its currency through some market means, okay? So that will obviously affect the different prices, okay? And recall that China wants to do this depreciation because it wants to improve its current account conditions, okay? So in this case, so far the current account is balanced, right? 12,000, 12,000, current account. Basically, if we just look at net exports, is zero, right? 
So it's neither a surplus nor a deficit. Okay, so we have a current account of zero. Then let's take a look at some changing conditions. Okay. So assume now that you know it's successfully devalued its currency. That so that now the rate is eight to one. Okay. So let's see how this will affect exports, first of all. Okay. Now we get into the part of why Marshall Learner is important. Okay, so again, recall that Marshall Learner says that you know it has to be elastic, right, to have any effect on the current account. So first, let's look at what happens if Marshall Learner condition is not fulfilled. Okay, so assuming then in this more extreme case that we are perfectly inelastic. Okay. So recall that means that no matter how much price changes, there will be no change in quantity, right? Okay. So regardless of what happens to the price, delta P leads to no changes in no delta Q. Okay. So remember elasticity is how does the price affect uh, the quantity demanded okay, of a good. Right. So in this case, the good would be the exports of t-shirts. So if nothing changes, Q is still 500. Okay, And currency depreciation, again, at least in the short run, we assume ceteris paribus that it doesn't change the price at all. Okay, Because this only affects external trades. Right? So internally, the nothing's really changed for the Chinese consumer or the Chinese producer. Again, that's our assumption under ceteris paribus. So, Price remains at 24 RMB, local price. Okay, so in this way, if we look directly going to the RMB totals, not much is affected, right? We still get 12,000 in income or revenue from the sale of these t shirts to the United States. However, However, the import condition now will. However, the import condition now will show. However, the import condition now will start to have some changes. Okay, so going back to the import side again, quantity remains unchanged because if we assume totally inelastic, we are still left with twenty. Okay. And coming from the USD price of 100, again, for US, by the same logic, nothing's really changed for US producers as a result of this currency uh, depreciation. So they keep their prices unchanged. But this means that for the buyers in China, a lot has changed. Okay, so originally they could get it for 600, but now because of this currency devaluation, they have to pay 800 for this. So if we calculate now the RMB total spent on importing goods, it becomes much higher. Okay, it becomes 6,000 or 16,000. Okay, so now we see from exports we make 12,000. From imports, we pay out 16,000 for an end result of negative 4,000, or in other words, a deficit. Okay? Look, so in most countries, their purpose for devaluing the currency obviously is to try to improve their current account conditions. But we see here if the Marshall Learner condition is not satisfied, uh, basically that it's relatively inelastic, and in this case, perfectly inelastic, then it would actually have the opposite effect of what is desired. That is to cause a deficit or heading toward a deficit rather than heading toward a surplus, okay? And this might be caused because of many reasons, you know, it might be something that the local country cannot produce, okay, that causes this elasticity, right? If it's a very small country, for example, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, with limited resources that depends very heavily on trade, then some raw materials or a lot of these things might be unavailable in their own country, causing the demand for imports 
to be relatively inelastic and exports as well right for various reasons might be inelastic so that's why the martial learning condition is an important point to point out when you're writing essays on the possible effects of currency changes obviously this also works in reverse right when currencies appreciate we would assume that it would cause a deficit but if martial learner condition is not fulfilled and elasticities are relatively inelastic then it would actually create a surplus so that would be an appreciation of the currency also uh, would go opposite to common logic if these assumptions are not fulfilled okay so uh, using the numbers we can also see what should happen right so I'll use black here just to note, to note what should actually happen so theoretically if so now we can look at the US cost of this so now US costs basically uh, have gone down right for t-shirts so USD would should be now three compared to four previously so under these conditions if demand were elastic people should buy more right so under normal conditions this should go up to let's say 700 okay if it goes up to 700 then us or sorry then Ch if it goes up to 700 then china for the trade totals would actually get Okay, something around 16,800 because, uh, you know, people, it's cheaper for U.S., but in China, the price remains unchanged. So the RMB that they get back increases in proportion to the quantity. Okay, then on the other hand, for imports, Chinese people, because they're paying more, theoretically should buy less, right? So if Marshall Learner holds and relatively elastic Chinese consumers should change their behavior by importing less so if they import 15 so we do 15 times 800 the local price then RMB total we end up also with then 12,000 okay so then in this case if we use these numbers we get 16 800 income right plus from exports minus 12,000 from the imports and we're left with a 4,800 surplus which means if Marshall Learner holds if things are actually elastic demand is actually elastic for both imports and exports then we will get a surplus like we expected and like the country probably wishes for when they conduct these depreciation or devaluation measures okay then one more thing that's very closely related with the Marshall learner condition is the J curve effect okay so I have this here so let's take a look at that very quickly so the J curve basically means that elasticities are not static okay if we recall from long time ago when we did the elasticity chapter elasticity tends to get higher over time okay so this is what causes the j-curve and that's what the j-curve kind of denotes uh, so hopefully everybody can recall that on the y-axis of the j-curve we have the current account balance and the horizontal axis is basically time okay usually in economics in months or years okay now we assume at the beginning uh, the country starts in somewhat of a deficit condition because usually if it wants to do devaluation measures that's to increase its or improve its current account position meaning you know generally we assume they start from a deficit and the j-curve happens is that it first goes down before it goes up okay so what this basically means is that in the beginning people take a bit of time to get used to it so before this turning point, we can say Marshall Learner is not fulfilled. Okay, no Marshall Learner. Because what's happening here is current account is actually getting worse following a 
depreciation of the currency. So again, this is the J-curve showing what happens if currencies depreciate, supposedly. Okay, so again, so again, this is a J-curve showing what happens when currencies depreciate, okay, or devalue, or devalued, okay. So Marshall Learner does not is not satisfied in this portion where it's going down. And then when it starts going up, that means probably over time, elasticities increase, right? And there is Marshall Learner. Okay, so having the J-curve account. So both of these are uh, very nice things to explain when you know, you're faced with any questions that call for you to evaluate the effects of currency changes on the current account balance. Okay, so these might show up in the multiple choice questions or in the writing questions as a point of evaluation to see whether it is always of benefit to a country, right? And as we all know, they do ask these type of questions a lot. They ask you to determine whether something always has an effect on something else. Okay, so hopefully with this video, you can uh, replay parts of it that you don't really understand. And obviously, you can always ask me questions, but hopefully this makes it a bit easier for you, to, uh, you guys to review. Okay. All right. Thank you. And that's it pretty much for today.